This week at MK Sports Guys, we have the test drive of the MK Elite Classic, but does it go to plan? We have a new product update for you. Chassis update as well, and also our Norway dealer. We then visit the workshop for the Honda S2000 project and the new K20A. Don't go anywhere, guys. You won't want to miss it. Right guys, here we go. We are in the Indy Classic with the old 919 Fireblade that we've been working on for the last few months, or weeks shall we say, probably a month or so. Um, we've had some issues with prop shafts, electrics, um, rear brakes not working, and a few other things, gear, gear lever not working correctly, interior panel trim was all no good. And do you know what? We're taking it out for its first test drive. knocking on for not far short of 30 years old now but it's still really refined actually and very quiet particularly smooth actually uh, for a carburetor not quite as revvy as the newer fuel injection engines and obviously not so much the horsepower we're talking about 120 130 horsepower here um, you know somewhere around 110 at the wheels maybe but you know what if you were cruising around on the AMB roads this Gear lever now, look, very sweet. Through the gears now, hardly any, very short throw. Um, new steering wheel with new quick release boss on it. New dashboard with a digi dash right in the centre there, and I can see all of that. All the switch gears nice and clean. Nice cage above her head. And, you know, it, it, it all works. You know, we'll take it around the roundabout a couple of times. Indy Classic actually turns in particularly well, that does. That's actually not bad. It's a slightly little thing, and if I hold it where it is, get, I'm just trying to feel the grip when I'm doing that, just see if it's understeering, and it's not. Not really. Not really at all. It's actually pretty easy to drive. Floor mounted pedals in this, not our new billet ones or nothing. It's our standard affair that used to be our laser cut pedal. And they're not quite got the same feel as the billet pedal box or the hydraulic clutches, but as a cable operation, it ain't bad at all. It ain't bad at all. Got plenty of room in the footwell in the classic. You get a bit more room in the footwell in the classic actually than in the uh, in the R because it's a different tunnel. So just sort of open it up a little bit, see as it goes. Well, I've got to say, that goes pretty well for a little fire blade. It would 919, it's good fun to drive, light on the steering, the right position's nice and good, feel safe for the cage. Thumbs up. Right, guys, back from the test drive in the Indy Classic. Of course, it seemed to be going okay, but then we had some little issues. Uh, carburetors started to malfunction a little bit, so we've stripped them cleaned them out, 
because it was overfueling. Um, driving fine, but it seems to be as soon as it got warm and everything else. So we've gone into that, we'll test drive it again, we will make sure they're okay. But the main thing was it's instability at high speed. Now, as soon as you wound it up to sort of 60, 70 mile an hour on the national speed limits along the dual carriageways, felt like the back end of this car was not connected to the front. <laughs> it's a wibbly dog. So we thought we'd stick it on the gauges here when we got back here and see what's going on. Well, we can now see why things are going away. So we've got it in the four wheel. I know we haven't got the, uh, it's correctly done. Um, we haven't got the pans under the bottom of the wheels here for the adjusters, but it's just to give you an idea. So we've got the laser alignment tool on it here. And this particular wheel is towing in by nine millimeters. That's huge. I know it says tow out, but obviously we're on the opposite way round because it's on the rear of the car. So it says tow out, but that is actually towing. So this, the passenger side, is six millimeters and the driver side is nine millimeters of toe in that's huge we're looking for overall of one millimeters that's half a millimeter either side now if you look at the front of the car and we're looking at the thrust line of the vehicle i is it the rear pushing the front straight on this one is not even touching the gauge not even close to the first line and then we've got on this one ah uh, four and a half mil so we would then make adjustments on that from where the flag line is, etc. So you can see it's completely on the wonk in every way. No wonder at high speed it kind of really feels like it's just going to move on its own. You make a little bit of steering input and the back end does not want to comply in any way in following the front end. So just the whole car is not following. If you ever see crabbing and things like that, a car going down the road where it's not dead straight, probably much, pretty much what this is doing if I was to look behind the vehicle. So what we'll do though is if you tune in next week, we'll show you how we do to adjust it all. Right, over here guys at the show where we've got our chassis uh, getting ready for departure out to the customers. We've got CWs here. So if you're looking at the chassis register, you know who you are, CW. We've got KA here, which is going out to Crate. This is going out to Norway with the low cost chassis uh, also, and Sandnes Motorsport is a Norwegian dealer. Um, so if you're looking out in that part of the world for a car, which would be in a RX-5 left-hand drive car or a low-cost base chassis, because there's a lot of low-cost motorsport out in that area, then touch them up and they'll obviously be in contact with them and we'll be able to assist you as well. Right guys, new product time. What we used to do on our side seal protectors was using this capping trim. And the aluminium section it used to go over, we would rivet it on. Well, we've always looking to evolve, but now we have some caps made up. These are powder coated black and will be on the shelf. I think they're on the shelf and for sale now. So, oh, available to dispatch next day delivery. So, if you're looking for a new product, and I'll show you how they fit, because we're going to sample them on the demo car. So, very, very simple. Whereas we used to do the other trim, like we showed you on the grey demo car there. Now, this cap is really simple. Slots into place, in, three rivets on the side, cleans the whole side of that up. Much better. I mean, you could powder coat them in a different colour or paint them or wrap them or do what you want with them, but it's a much cleaner um, side seal protector. Obviously, it's protecting your, your shoes against kicking it, etc. And when you're getting in and out, that's on that side there. Once you put the side cap on here, you wonder what we do with this bit. Well, this bit is just trimmed then. Uh, we have a nice little rubber trim that slots into this section, goes up here, we've done that side there, just to clean that end off as well. Um, most of the time you don't actually need to do it, you can use P-trim or rubber trim to clean off that edge. But the side seal protectors, looking killer. Right, back into the builds here guys, um, hashtag project Joseph here. Um, few bits and bobs as always uh, being done. Um, modification on the exhaust system, last week this wasn't attached to the silencer, this was a supplied exhaust system by the customer, not one that we had here, wanted to use an existing one that he had. We did have to modify it though, we cut out a flange piece here, we've moved the catalytic converter forward, we've then changed this because it was down into a two inch system, we've changed that to a two and a half on the end here into one of our stock two and a half inch silencers and with our standard mounting bracket then. So we've had to modify this section here. Um, doesn't look like we've done a lot, but it is, it's a lot of cutting and shutting to make this all fit. Uh, Gary done a sterling job of fitting that for us. So we've done that air filter pipes in, um, remote oil cooler in oil filter is down in here. That's also in, um, wiring some bits that we've been doing. Um, obviously, you know from last week, seat belts, seats, tunnel tops, new seal protectors guys that are in, that we're using, 
Uh, they've been instead of the four piece trim set, they've gone in as well, all riveted in, much simpler and easier to fit. And I think it looks pretty clean actually. Quick release boss, all welded on as well, ready for the steering wheel onto the shaft. We've done all of that as well. Um, it's a nice uh, race tech one that we use. As you know from last week, calm rings, boot box cover, rear lights in, reflectors going in. So all IVA, we've just got the number plate light as we said to fit on there. Um, so pretty much now, and we'll start looking at this and bleeding the brake system up and all of those little components then. We're just waiting for the ECU and loom and other bits, and then we can then fire this engine up as well. So we're not far away, um, but it's looking super sharp in the black and orange. Gotta say, Honda Red, killer. Right guys, also here with the K20 installation here that we're doing more updates. So side panels all been dry fitted, as you know, the other week. We've now cut holes in for the exhaust system has gone on. We've done the link pipe with the catalytic converter in there that will go up to, customers actually change your mind, he wants a carbon silencer on here now. So we, we'll put that in once we've finished that. We've put all the brackets in for that. The mounting bracket is already there. Once the silencer be fitted on, we've just got to reposition the side panel one more time, but this will be in the manual for the, for the hole that's on the K20 exhaust system as well. Um, front end we're mocking up, it's having a red wishbones on this and it's having a red roll bar as well. So radiator, oil cooler, fan. Um, obviously this is a Mazda front upright, it's all new bearings, everything else on this. Um, it's all completely new. Um, makes it easier. And then with Joseph's just been on with a mock-up plate here for the alternator because we get rid of, as we said, all the water pump on this, all the pulley system. So we're making a new, it's a billet plate here, blanking for electric water pump. And this is a adjuster to tighten the belt up for it as well. Um, so left hand, right hand thread adjuster. Uh, we're just making that, will be um, they'll be available um, on the on our website soon as well so we can sorting out the alternator belts, etc. as well. Um, fuel pressure regulators in. Um, battery is in with a new mounting bracket. We've mounted this lower down rather than the bulkhead, uh, mainly because when we mock up here, we're gonna have the air filter coming out and, and mounted on the back tunnel here. And it's gonna get a bit tight on the bulkhead otherwise. Um, then the coolant lines are going in. We've got a reroute kit, a 180 degree silicon hose. It will run back and through to the top of the radiator, say the We've got the fuel pressure regulator, basically dummy, dummy plumbed in here, basically into the fuel rail, etc., and return um, back to the fuel pump. So all the electrics were in the other week, they're done. Um, this side panel has all been prepped and done. Uh, diff's in now, um, oil in it as well, as the guys have put on there for me kindly. Oil's in that as well, drive shafts are all in, all new calipers, all new rear end here, it's all bolted up, all the handbrake cable will be finishing in here. As you do the crossover on these, you use the standard Mazda MX-5 cables on this and do a crossover for the length. Handbrake levers in, etc. And of course that uses the stock switch on this. That's all new, new cables, new centre cable in here um, as well. And then we'll finish off with a steering column. Uh, this is going to have a quick release boss, which is here. We're just going to finish mocking that up and then weld that in as well. So it's on. All the little bits for the K20A will be in the manual. We'll update that as we progress through it as well. Uh, to keep you in the loop because it will have an oil cooler on this. We get rid of the water cooled oil cooler, which is down here. That's why it's not in here. And the, we'll zoom in down here. Just in this section here, we'll put a remote um, sandwich takeoff plate on here, just where my finger is. And uh, we'll run that into the 19 row oil cooler as well. So quite a bit of progress going on with that. And this fits great. The ground clearance on this car, if Anna will do me the honor, look, at that, I reckon we've only got through maybe 25 mil under the box section there. Plenty of clearance on the sump on this. It sits up in our bonnet scoop that we know is sort of designed for the taller engines as well, which is the same as what we do on the S2000. So plenty of room on that. We're super happy with the clearance issues and the six speed box as well. So yes, it's another chassis here, brake lines, fuel lines finished in that roll cage, put in, he's having a roll bar, but this is his PD's car. Um, don't forget, chassis schedule should be up here, pop up for you to see where we're at and who's coming up next, moving up on the schedule. So another one here with a floor pan, billet pedal box, all fitted in, roll cage. So yeah, they're rolling in. Uh, just a small little job that was done here, customer had a standard 50 mil roll cage here um, and he's going to be welding this back into his chassis. He's having it repowder coating and everything else but he wanted some side impact bars on. So we got these fabricated up and welded on some nice 
larger side impact bars because he's going to be doing a lot more track work and he feels a bit safer having the side impact bars on there. I don't blame him. It would work out perfectly well. So, yep, that's ready to rock and roll and get him well, back on the way for his winter project. Right, guys, another busy week in the workshop, as always. So don't forget, next week, tune in for the Indy Classic and where we start dialing in the uh, how-to guide, I suppose, of what we're going to be doing with the uh, geometry of the car. So I'm having a fast car if it won't handle or go in a straight line very nice. So that'd be great for Kev to get that back, you know, running and all the bells and whistles on it. So yes, also, don't forget, cars for sale. If you're looking for a car yourself, head on down to our cars for sale section. We showed them what we had available the other week. It's a nice little winter project for yourself. Get yourself in the garage, play with the tools, get it ready for spring of next year. Fantastic. Hope you like it, guys. Like, share. Do you know what? Catch you next week.